we are working on the inside of our house. This is a multi-purpose room that we will use for our miniature photography. And we're gonna use it as the sorority house in our Summer and Cali doll series. On the side wall, we have these floating shelves that we are going to decorate. These shelves are made of foam board, so we can't really put anything too heavy on them, but I do want them to look really full. So the first thing we're gonna do is make some plants. You might have seen this snake plant in one of our YouTube lives, but today we're gonna slow it down and go into a little more detail. I am using green cardstock, green markers, a recycled plastic cap from a glue stick, brown felt, clear nail polish, and a one inch strip of white paper. Let's start by making a pot. Take the plastic glue stick cap and wrap it with the one inch strip of white paper. I am just carefully rolling it around the cap. It's important to stop and make sure the ends are even because you want them to be nice and flush. There we go. Use a glue stick to apply glue to the end, then continue rolling it. And glue the end in place. Push the cap down to the bottom of the tube, making it flush with the bottom. I don't wanna see the orange cap. Take a small piece of tissue, toilet paper works as well, and we're gonna just fill the bottom of the cap. Push the paper down and pack it to the edge. Cut brown felt into small pieces. First, I cut it into strips, then cut the strips into little tiny cubes or squares. I guess they're more squares than cubes. Cover the tissue with hot glue, making sure you hit the sides of the cap and the sides of the paper. Before the glue dries, add the felt. And we're gonna very carefully push that in I do not want to get any of that hot glue on my fingers because that would be a very, very bad day. And now the pot is ready. Cut about a three inch by three inch square of cardstock. Take green markers. These are just regular Crayola markers. I have a dark green and then, you know, a regular kind of green. Starting with the lighter green, draw little squigglies across the paper. It's kind of like just go back and forth, almost like you're trying to draw grass. And you take this all the way across. And I have a little bit of variation. Sometimes they're a little larger, and sometimes they're a little smaller. Once you do one line, go back and do another. This is totally going to take a while. It's very, very time consuming, and but it's not like difficult. You just sit there and draw with your marker all the way across the paper. It's a good time to turn on the TV, watch your favorite show, and with the knee. Last season is now available on Netflix. <laughs> That's not a plug. I'm not like employed by Netflix or anything, but you know, I just really like that show and I am low key hoping that they would just bring it back if enough people watch it. Ooh, okay, talking too much. My lines are getting too big. I'm gonna make them kind of smaller. When I stop and actually pay attention and focus, it comes out so much better. So you, there we go, just little lines going back and forth. You don't want them to be super thick like up here, but if it happens, it's not a big deal because once we cut these into leaves, it'll be a lot less noticeable. It's all about the angle of my marker. Straight up gives me a nice thin tip, which is what we want. Continue this going all the way down the paper. Now that that is done, go back with a darker green and make a smaller line right over the line that you've already drawn. Continue all the way down the page and I'm done. Oh wait, turn it over and do the back. That took about 15 minutes to do the other side completely. Take scissors and cut long thin leaves. Take it to the point there. Oops, hit the camera, sorry about that. And then just kind of cut the other side. All right, let's see if we can do a better job than that. Okay, here we go. We're gonna cut, let's turn it over. Start on this edge and just cut a nice little point and then do the other side. I want it flat on the end 
and then I want it to come to a point at the top. Cut as many as you can out of the paper. I got a few small ones out of the scraps. Now that we have all of our leaves, take one and fold it in half. I have to use my nails to kind of just make an indention right down the middle and then we can get a nice fold. Just like that. Then repeat for all of the other leaves. These definitely don't have to be perfect. The imperfections is what makes it look more realistic. On some of them, give it a little twist so it just kind of curls around a little. Take the pot, use a hot glue gun to apply a little bit of glue to the end, then push it into the felt. Might have to hold it for a few seconds while it dries. Continue adding the leaves Trim the ends where needed, just to add a little variation in height. I'm adding a few short ones around the bottom to make a miniature snake plant. To give it a little shine, we can use clear nail polish. Carefully brush each leaf. This also helps to make the leaves stick together. However, you can use other types of clear drying glue. I would just stay away from water-based glue because it will make the marker run. Paint the exposed felt at the bottom, then allow it to dry. Use white cardstock instead of green to make a different kind. I just looked these up online and it says that the snake plant is a type of succulent, so that's pretty awesome. They are the perfect house plant for people who aren't great house plant owners. Another option is to take yellow cardstock and cut out the leaf shape. Using the lighter green marker, Draw a leaf on the inside, leaving just a little bit of the yellow on the edge. Color it in, take the darker green, and add some stripes going all the way down. Turn it over to the other side and repeat. Make several, bend them, and glue them into a pot, giving us a nice assortment of snake plants. Next, we can use books, lots and lots of books. But we're going for this whole monochromatic theme, so I made printables in gray tones. Since we want to make a lot, we're gonna cheat here and use a little foam board. We can make individual books. This one is an inch and a half tall. These are an inch and three quarters. Or we can make a collection of books. This takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of foam board. We're gonna glue them all together and then just glue this on the outside. Cut foam board into one inch strips, then cut them to an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters. Cut out one of the printable book covers, apply glue to the back side of the printable. Take the front of the cover and match it up with the edges of the foam, then wrap the rest around to make a very easy book. And it's lightweight so we can make a whole bunch and not worry about it being too heavy for the shelf. For an easy stack of books, here is a printable. This one has four books and this one has seven. The seven books are an inch and a half tall. The four books are an inch and three quarters tall. Cut out the printable, fold it on the line for the front cover, make a good crease, then fold it on the line for the back cover, making a trifold. Cut four pieces of foam. Each one is one inch by one inch and three quarters. If we just stacked and glued these all together with a glue stick, then they are too small for the cover. So to take up a little bit of space, I'm using hot glue between all of the layers of foam board and I'm not squishing it down so it's flush. I want a little bit of space left between each book. Press it on a flat surface to make sure the bottom is flat and I also do it on the spine. Place it into the printable, make sure it fits. That's pretty good. Apply glue to the paper, glue it onto the foam board, wrapping the paper all the way around to make a stack of books. To fill our bookshelves, we're gonna need a lot more than this. And that's going to take a while, but thanks to Movie Magic, we are done in a matter of seconds. 
But no, seriously, that took me like a good day and a half. On a scrap of paper, draw a one inch by two inch rectangle. Draw rectangles out to the sides that extend up an inch and a half to make a pattern. Cut it out, trace it onto black paper, sketch tabs out to the sides. I know this might be difficult to see, but I only added them on the two smaller sides. Cut it out, fold on the lines drawn, glue the tabs onto the adjacent side to make a box. Use a hole punch on metallic paper, cut the circle in half, fold it in half, glue it onto the corner, cut hollowed out rectangles out of a small piece of scrapbook paper, glue it onto the front to make a file box. I made a total of three. I added some clock faces to our printables, cut one out, glue it onto a button to make a miniature clock. To make it stand up, glue it to another button, giving us more items to add to our shelves. I printed out some pictures of my dolls from my Instagram. I cut them out, glue it onto black cardstock, cut around it, leaving a little around the edge, glue on strips of metallic paper, take a small triangle of paper, fold over the straight side, trim off the top, open the fold, cut the bottom at an angle, glue it onto the back, right in the middle, to make a picture frame that can stand up. Now let's add a tiny bit of color. On a piece of white paper, make abstract art. I'm starting out by fading some blue and white. Let's add a little horizon and a little green off into the background. I want it to look all very kind of like a landscape, but not really. I take a scrap of paper with a little bit of white paint and just rub it across the picture, making a nice little smear of paint. Allow it to dry. Cut rectangles out of recycled cardboard. Glue the paper onto the cardboard. Trim off the excess, leaving a little around the edge. Cut off the corners. Wrap the paper over the edge and glue it in place to make artwork. I made a few more paintings. The paintings help to bring together all of the colors for the room. Now let's put everything on the shelves. Hang the painting above the shelves. This room has really high ceilings, so we can decorate up. Add the books onto the shelves. Then add the file boxes, add pictures, the clock, and of course, our plants. Place a few of the larger plants on the floor, along with some extra paintings, giving us a very detailed yet neutral wall. We decorated the shelves the same way on the opposite wall, and we put one of our large paintings right between them. Add our Amazon rug to the floor, I want to make a new couch, but for now we're just going to use our recycled, easy to make couch. Place it by the door at an angle, making sure the door can still open and close. This is a very small space that we'll need to make a smaller couch later. Add the table and chairs from our Snoopy Remit Versus video. I moved a few of the plants around so we could see them better. I put one of the snake plants on the table, but I'm not loving that table anymore. Urgh. So I switched it out for our marble top table from our IKEA dining room video. This table is also a little smaller, so it gives us a little more space in the room. Completing our room. I really like the way this space turned out. We have some great angles for photos and as a backdrop for our stories. Thank you for joining us while we decorated this room. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at MyFroggyStuff and the Frog Vlog. And you're done. Happy crafting!
think you'll never 